Okay, today we're going to look at uh, creating a waterfall effect inside of uh, Construct 2. So this is going to be going into particle effects. Uh, I'm just going to run the effect first. You can see what uh, what it is we're going to take a look at creating here. That's a reasonably um, reasonably effective waterfall kind of effect. In this case, a little more like a burst pipe or something like that. But we'll show how you can alter the settings and uh, create more of a waterfall effect. So first things first, um, you need a graphic. Um, in this case, I think it's a good idea to take uh, a, a snapshot, a, a clipping of something that uh, already looks like water a fair bit. So you can just do a Google search on that, uh, bring it into something like Krita, and then erase the edges, um, but don't fully erase them. Just use a, a low opacity brush to erase. And the idea behind that is you want to erase enough of the edges so that when it runs together as a particle effect, you can see um, the edges are kind of see-through, and that mirrors the, the same effect that water might have. Uh, just add to the realism a bit. So uh, we're going to take a look now at the settings that I use. Um, I'm not going to create this from scratch. Um, if you've been messing around with Construct, I assume you've already uh, looked into some tutorials for importing a sprite um, and creating particle effect. That's pretty basic uh, knowledge for constructs. So take a look at the settings we use to actually create that waterfall um, and downfall kind of effect. Um, there's three really important ones here. The first one, you have to look at the grow rate. So I'm going to turn the grow rate off on this first one here. Put it to zero. And I'm going to run this and you can see what happens. Um, without the grow rate, we lose basically all of that there. So grow rate is very important. Um, so let's reset that to 90. Next thing, you got to have a high gravity set for this effect. So I'm going to put the gravity to zero for this one here. I'm going to run this. And you can see this is the effect with no gravity applied to it. Um, which could be effective as something like a steam kind of effect. But for our purposes, um, it's not doing what we want. So uh, there we go. So the importance of, of having a high gravity. And this last one is dependent upon um, the project itself. I've got a timeout here of three. That's only related to the height of this project. Um, in a smaller project, or if the water waterfall was closer to the bottom of the screen, you could just have a timeout of one. But in our case here, this is what happens when you have a timeout of one. Again, it doesn't uh, doesn't mirror the effect of water there. So, put it back to three, and there we go. Um, so, I mean, I just created these sort of really simplistic kind of water spouts inside of, uh, of Inkscape. You know, they could be useful inside of a, inside of a game. Um, if we want to create more of a waterfall effect though, let's say we've got a, a ledge and we want water running across the length of the the ledge, that's where you're going to play with the X randomizer effect. So I'm going to set it to 90. So we're going to get a wider um, waterfall here. And there we go. So you can kind of imagine a ledge going across the screen here with that effect coming out then. Um, in this case, you can see there's sort of gaps between the particles. So what we might want to do is uh, maybe bump up the size a little and also increase the rate and there we go now we've got a, a thicker um, horizontal uh, ledge to the waterfall anyways um, I hope that was useful just a quick tip inside of construct uh, so again if you freeze the uh, if you freeze the frame here you can see once you have your your water graphic you've got these settings that you can apply to it 
and it creates a, a pretty effective waterfall effect. So just a quick tip, uh, thanks for watching and I'll be back again soon with another tutorial.